Alright, I'm David Harry and in this video I'm going to be showing you something that has been fixed in DaVinci Resolve Studio on Apple Silicon computers and that is the ability to export H.265 in 10 bit using a chroma subsampling of 422 but also using a multi-pass or a dual pass encode as well. Now just to be clear, in the past, this function used to fail as far as the actual multipass was concerned. And then what happened was Blackmagic removed that functionality from Resolve, but then they've obviously fixed it and reintroduced it again, which is really cool. Now, I don't know at what point that was reintroduced. However, if we have a look here, and about DaVinci Resolve, I am on version 18.1.1 build seven of Studio. So from at least this point onwards, this is where the functionality is being reintroduced to work again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is switch over onto the encoder and let's have a go at this. So what I'm gonna do is basically run through exactly what it is that I would normally do to set up such an encode. So first thing I'm going to do is just select H.265 up there as like the H.265 master option. Let me just make sure what I'm putting this. In fact, let me just throw this on the desktop, which is where all my junk goes. And then I'm going to call it something meaningful as in test one. All right. Now what I'm going to do is just run through some of these settings here and then, you know, explain what it is that I'm doing. Okay. So I'm in QuickTime here, which is basically going to generate a dot MOV. And the main reason for that is because if I go to audio, I can then select linear PCM. Um, I'm going to switch that over to 24 bit. Now, the reason why I'm going to select linear PCM is because it's obviously uncompressed audio. So I'm actually going to be doing a high quality output here. So I might as well match the audio with it. If this was in MP4, you would only be able to get the option of AAC, which is obviously a compressed audio codec. So moving back to video here, as we can see, QuickTime H.265, and I'm going to use the hardware acceleration option here as well. Then what I'm going to do is come down down to resolution and this is going to match the timeline and obviously the source footage which in this instance is UHD 4K. This will obviously vary depending upon what it is that you're doing and as far as the frame rate is concerned I'm going to leave that on 59.94 once again matching the project and the source footage. However when I come down to quality here automatic is normally a good option but I, what I'm going to do is just switch over onto restrict to and then I'm going to select 200,000 kilobits per second now just a quick explanation of that so the reason why i'm going to use such a high bit rate for a very efficient video codec is simply because the content that i've got here is in 4k uhd and 59.94 frames per second but the content itself has got like a lot of detail a lot of movement and a lot of like weird stuff going on in the picture and stuff so basically bumping up the bit rate to match the content now of course this will be different depending upon what you're doing you're going to select an appropriate bit rate for the resolution and frame rate and the actual subject matter and content but don't forget here if i were to export this out at at least prores 422 hq the bit rate is going to be way way higher and then what i'm going to do is come down here and i'm going to select main 42210 and then importantly have multi-pass encode switched on. So basically what I'm doing here then is just setting up the export so that it is using H.265 10 bit with the chroma subsampling of 422, but also using the multi-pass encode, which is really important for this particular encode. So what I'm gonna do is add that over to the queue and then I will click on render all. Now the thing is here, in the past, this would have immediately have failed at this point. However, as we can see, this is going through. Now what I'm gonna do is just speed this up until I get to the end of that second pass. Okay, just coming up to the end of that second pass there and bingo, there we go. That's all sorted, no errors or anything like that. Now what I'm going to do is try what I'm assuming is the software option when I untick use hardware. Now at this point, I don't have a clue what's being used here as far as the software codec is concerned that's being used for the encoding, but I'll give it a try anyway. Not that I would normally use this myself. Now I'm gonna leave everything exactly as it was. However, this time, 
I cannot select multi-pass encode. So obviously you can't do the multi-pass in software only at this point. Now this might be something that might like get reintroduced further down the line, just as the hardware selection got reintroduced and was working. But as we can clearly see right now, we cannot select multi-pass there. However, if I switch back on the hardware, boom, we get multi-pass again. Okay, so just to quickly summarize, this function is definitely working which is super duper awesome now i do appreciate that this particular type of export ain't gonna be for everybody however for those of you out there who would know exactly why you would want to use this type of export it's just great to have the option available anyways if you've liked the video or found it informative in any way a thumbs up would be ace and a sub to the channel would be super duper awesome although maybe not quite as super duper awesome as what this function is and there will also be some links and whatnot in the video description below i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now